John Landis, director of the legendary comedy Animal House He's in studio. He's trying to get comfortable. This, this, is the get least, comfortable. this is the least comfortable couch in, in the history of television. I know Just our boss is watching. He's horrified it. that you even said that, but it's true. It's true. Where's your boss? I'm sorry. You cheap guy. Ah! Get a better desk. <laughs> Wait, are you here for a comedy show or are you here to talk about I your know. film? I like you. You're Both. funny. Yeah. It's great to have you in studio. And I know so many people are so excited about this event. 40th anniversary of the classic Animal House. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and you know what? The subtitle for Animal House is um, films I, I wasn't allowed to watch as a child. Yeah. Good. See? Yeah. And he's like, rightly so, right? <laughs> yeah. R-rated. Yeah. Uh, that was sort of like... I don't know, I was talking to my producer in the newsroom and he said, you know, that was like um, the one film like we just, you know, you couldn't watch. You had to watch it. You know, when it, would keep, when it went to HBO, finally you could watch it, you know, um, at your friend's house or something. But um, it's just a classic. Did you ever think when you made that film in 78 that it was going to be the classic it is? No. Yeah? You don't think, well, I don't think that way. Yeah. You never really know. You know, movies are alchemy. Yeah. And even though they're all made the same way, yeah. uh, I've worked on not including or including my own maybe 160 film features yeah in every job you can do and uh it's always mysterious yeah <laughs> how it ends up because people don't understand that movies the first of all it's a complete collaboration right. between the the, film, the director and the crew and yeah and i mean belushi i mean my gosh like you know and the actors, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's it's just you, so much is it's it's constant compromise, and so much is the weather, or whether your actor had a fight with his wife, or mm. you know whatever's going on, and you deal with electricity, and you yeah. deal with. Yeah, sounds like you got a lot of stories and secrets to spill. <laughs> no, no, it's just that the experience. It's when you talk to. People who made a lot of movies, it, it's hard to separate the film itself from the experience of making the film. Mm -hmm. Do you think? Well, we romanticize it, right? I mean, as as the viewer, as the as the you know the the audience, we see what you have created, yeah. and we think, oh, it's you know, it must have been this magic, like you said, this alchemy. There must have been something that happened that made it this magical experience. And you're saying, look, when you're in the middle of it, it's not necessarily feeling like that mm -hmm. all the time. Well, right? sometimes Animal House was a total joy to make, yeah. and some <laughs> movies are really fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and and some aren't. Yeah. And, and the other thing that's so interesting is I've worked on films where everyone hated each other and it was really <laughs> unpleasant oh, and the man. script was lousy and you hated to be there and then you see the movie and you go, you can tell. This is good. It yeah. looked greater. It's and then I've worked on films where it was like a love, it was a love in. Everyone yeah. had yeah. a wonderful time. It couldn't have gone better. Okay. And you see the finished film and you go, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Well, so you never, you never know. Yeah. yeah. So, so you're going to be speaking at the George Eastman Museum, uh, which is sold out, by the way. Yeah. That's got to make you feel good that all these people want to hear what you have to say, see the, the movie. It's it's extraordinary to me, and I'm very very lucky that I've made a really a lot of movies that still play. Mm -hmm. So I'm I was surprised that when uh, Black Panther came out, yeah. suddenly the media was interested in, in coming to America. Yeah. <laughs> Because Black Panther, which I enjoyed, is, was given all of these accolades his first and all this stuff. And I'm thinking, I remember Eddie Murphy was kind of taken aback because that's a, a big Hollywood movie yeah. that is essentially African-American yeah. by design. I mean, it's a story, it's Cinderella, but he's an African. It's right. so funny you should say that because I was just kind of thinking that I was going back. We were watching, yeah, some, we're of watching clips, some of the and clips. And I was kind of thinking of those parallels, too. Just I was well, also, it was a gigantic international hit. And, yeah. for, and still, and for me, one of the joys I take from that movie, and I knew it at the time, and I didn't say anything <laughs> because I thought, oh, I'm not saying that. <laughs> I'm not saying anything. I'm listening, I'm listening. You know what I've discovered about early morning show people? We're a little uptight? Not at all. One profanity and they'd laugh. <laughs> They it must be so, Look at they, John Evan wound up real tight all week, okay? I need to let loose, so. I can say more you're swear words. You're giving something to me here. I'm, I'm right. taking it. What were you going to say, but you didn't say? Well, no, but when Eddie pitched it, it was, you know, the one line idea was, you know, African prince comes to America to look for his queen and stuff. And my wife, actually, who's speaking also at the Dryden, um, Deborah Van Doolman, and uh, she 
is a very brilliant costume designer. Mm. She's done many great, mm -hmm. many legendary, like, she designed Thriller for me. Yeah, yeah, which I so want to talk I, about too. I wish I had a nickel for every one of those red jacket knockoffs. Yeah, right. She made. <laughs> and then uh, she designed Raiders of the Lost Ark and, yeah. and Coming to America. Yeah. She was nominated for an Oscar. But she, when I came home and pitched her, what do you think of this? She immediately said, oh my God, it's a fairy tale. It's just a fairy tale and it's Africa Magic Kingdom yeah. as opposed to Swedish or right. Swiss. Mm -hmm. right. It's always the Liechtenstein castle, yeah, the Bavarian right. castle. And, and Deborah said, my God, we can create our own fantasy African country. She was so excited. And I realized, wait a minute. Eddie's black, which means it's a it's Africa, it's an it's an African kingdom. They come so the majority of the cat. Do you know? I think there are three, maybe three or four speaking parts for white people. Okay, so funny because everyone else in the movie is African American. I just saw this film like maybe a month ago. Yeah. Okay, I just saw it coming, but I've seen it. I grew, I grew but up you know watching what, it. But you know what was exciting? And it, it hit me. It struck me because as a kid I didn't see that. Well, good yeah. but because as an adult, what was? I went, now you. Yeah. Yeah, what you think was think exciting to me was Eddie was such a big star at that yeah, moment. Yeah, he was huge. That I thought, gee, you know, we're making every movie up to that moment that Hollywood ever yeah. made, not mm -hmm. Independence, but that Hollywood ever made, if there was a, a person of color in the lead, whether it was Sidney Poitier or, sure. or Richard Pryor mm -hmm. or Hattie McDaniel, whoever it was, their character. They were black, and by that I mean the story hinged. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, poor Sydney was always yeah, the, the black guy. The black guy, but yeah. listen, I made treading places. Eddie's the black guy. Mm -hmm. And in this movie, I realized it's fairy tale, it's a romantic comedy. No one will notice mm -hmm. that it's basically black because. It's, it's not about their blackness, it's no. that people, <laughs> and it's, it's a love funny. story. We and know, who and can it's relate? funny. Yeah. But let's let's take a quick break. We gotta this get is to so break. good. We're going to have more fun. John okay. Landis next. Oh, this is Plus, so good. We'll be right back. But what was interesting is when I realized that, which was the first week before we started. Here's the forecast. 76, less humid and less heat. Beautiful, gorgeous. That was the forecast? Yeah, what do you need? We're trying to save time for you. But we've got one more thing we need you to do, Mr. Landis. And there'll be an earthquake later, but don't worry about it. I'm not a meteorologist. Wait, wait, wait. You've got, you've got one you more job to do. Yeah. Yes, it's time to give away a $15 gift card to Bill Gray's for a viewer celebrating a birthday this week. This week, it's... You said the guy was Bobby who's sick. I was kidding, sick. I was oh, kidding. Oh. It's John, <laughs> who just turned 34. We wish viewers a happy birthday every morning at 5.55 on 13 Wham? <laughs> this is called Wham? It's yeah. Wham! W-H-A-M, yeah. classic colors. Wham. It's, yes. a, it's, a, it's an... It's, it's an a, homage it's a, to a British, it's a, British pop it's a, group. We wake you up before you go. George though. Michael and Wham. <laughs> I'm with George Michael. And, and, and they Ridgely. pick one at random every week for a Bill Gray's <laughs> prize. What's Bill Gray? Oh, that was great. It's, a, it's, a, it's a local establishment. It's uh, famous for their burgers. Famous okay, for their burgers. $15. Yes. How many burgers you can you get? You want to go to Bill Gray's? I'll 15, take you to Bill do Gray's. Do I get a $15 I'll buy gift? Yeah, okay. You can get whatever two, you want. Three. Okay. Yeah. $15. Um, we are, you're in town talking about Animal House. This is the worst couch I've ever we're making up for it with a fascinating well, interview. Say, yes. You are so funny, and I think that probably goes a long way in terms of some of the, the movies you've directed. And yeah, because some of the stuff you do. Hopefully the comedy. Uh, three Amigos, you know, <laughs> I would like you to kiss me on the veranda. On um, the yeah, lips will be just fine. You know, like, come on. You know, like the burning bush. Like, Interesting you chose you know, that line. Honey, I watched that film a thousand times as a child and an adult. All right? That's so funny. I like, I like Three Amigos. Three it makes Amigos. Me laugh. Is, yeah. It still does. That's the thing. Well, the it's also, still carry. It's a Western. Mm -hmm. My friend Walter Hill, who made many westerns, said, "If they knew how much fun it was to make a western, they wouldn't let us." Yeah. <laughs> because you're outside riding horses; it's the most fun. It's yeah. so great, and the people of Santa Poco. You know, like I mean, I, I'm Puerto Rican, so of course I was always like, you know. And then a guapo. My uncle looks like a guapo, like you know, and you know. I, I never knew what the word plethora was until I watched your movie. You know. Well, it's an educational film. It is. Tony, Tony, Children. Tony Plana, who uh, yes. plays Jefe. Yeah, Jefe. He's Puerto Rican. Yeah, yeah. Jefe. And one 
you collector. You know what a plethora is? I'm telling you, it looks like my Uncle Frank. I'm not kidding you. Every time I would well, see Uncle Frank, the, I would say, everyone F. else in it is Mexican, but, well, yeah. Yeah, but he's Puerto Rican. Yeah. So, so much to talk about. We, before you we left uh, break, we were talking about Thriller, because obviously you're the man behind that, and just who would have thought we'd been sitting here talking to you. Thank you for putting that together, because we still. Well, Michael's the one who called me. I mean, <laughs> what'd you think? Oops, Michael Jackson wants to talk to you. What'd you say? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. No, actually, <laughs> I said Michael Jackson of the Jackson Five. Little, li I keep thinking little of Mikey, little Michael yeah. Jackson, and uh, I was in London, and he called me very like two or three in the morning, mm -hmm. and hello, you know, <laughs> and he was a big fan of a movie I made called American Werewolf in yes, London, another classic. and he was particularly taken with Rick Baker's special effects, yes, the makeup when the transformation, and he, he basically wanted to turn into a monster. That was what Mike wanted. So I brought Rick Baker over. He was living still with his parents in Encino, <laughs> right behind Gelson's <laughs> grocery store. And, uh, you know, it, it, it was actually fun. It was difficult to get the money because the CBS records and those guys didn't care. Th people forget Thriller was already out for over a year. Mm -hmm. And for over a year, it was the number one album in the world. It was already the most successful album of all time. Wow. But it was the music video that got people wait, wait, wait. when they, I was a kid. The very important music videos were uh, Beat It and Billie Jean. Yeah, okay. Billie Jean, right. And Bob Giraldi directed Beat It. And I can't remember yeah. who directed an English guy. And what's extraordinary is that, you know, Michael's the first black act on MTV. MTV used, seriously had a policy, white pop, mm -hmm. white rock and roll. And Walter Yetnikoff said, if you want Michael Jackson, by the way, who has the biggest album of all time, you have to put on his video. So he's the first guy. It sounds so weird. That's yeah, so now. strange to yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. Oh, growing yeah. up watching and, and look so, at MTV today. Then, Can't find a video. <laughs> yeah. well, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> anyway, they were wonderful. After Thriller, because what happened was, I, it's a long story, but I made Thriller. It then came out, and after a year and like five months, it went from number four back to number one and tripled wow. its sales. Yeah. It was, so it, it made it MTV, so you know, it did so many things. And basically, then there were a lot of good music videos mm -hmm. made. There really became... Well, because mm -hmm. the music video was the thing. I mean, I grew up watching well, videos. It's production. coming back I now. I want it. Look, if I, if I heard a song on the forms, radio, I well, wanted a music video. Well, it's cheaper. They don't yeah. spend money. But now, uh, because YouTube has become a big... Right, right. right. I mean, th there was the contacts, I remember, you had to, he had to wear that were painful, but they were so great when his eyes turned. Well, now you just was, do all that stuff, uh, CGI. See, right, right. But I'm ta I remember watching a documentary about, about the making of the video. No, making a thriller. And that it was, was great. Yeah. You know, and and um, and then the people dancing, and uh, I I don't know. I, such I love an it. event, such a production. Wait, wait a minute! It just yeah. dawned on me: the people dancing in Thriller were the way they were dancing in Coming to America. Remember? Not really. Come on. <laughs> Come She's on. like, wait a minute! It all came you back. You don't to see me. people doing this in Coming to America. <laughs> the dancers when they're coming out well, dancing. The, the I dancers. That was you know who choreographed that mm -hmm. was a uh, Lakers cheerleader named Paula, Paula Abdul. Paula Abdul. Oh. Oh who, my who, gosh. when we were shooting, said, please, John, can I have tomorrow off? Because she was auditioning to do a record. Oh. And then became, by the time the movie came out, she was a star. People wow. are going to ask you these questions at the at the event afterward, right? You're going to stick around and do a Q&A? No, ask, or? yes. My wife, Deborah, and I, who designed most of my films, including Animal House, um, which is, no one credits it, but Animal House is a pretty terrific period film. Mm -hmm. It takes place in 1962, Kennedy's president, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a different time. And I think one of the reasons it's lasted so much, maybe one of the reasons is that it was a period picture already. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. it hasn't dated like, yeah. you know. Could you make a film like that today? Oh, sure. I, in fact, today, it, Animal House was considered so gross and vulgar. We got pretty horrific yeah. reviews. Yeah. And then when it was so successful, John, you just showed it. John Belushi, Newsweek, trashed the movie and... Like ten days later, John was on the cover. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it was that's the picture, and it was such a success. It had huge impact, and in fact, the really the comedies have you know, even in a movie mainstream yeah. comedy like Bridesmaids, they're having right. Yeah, people you doing know, grotesque things. things. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's so great to talk yeah, to you. We've so got to go. The Eastman House. The Eastman House. If you live in Rochester or in the area, you're very lucky to have the George Eastman House that shows. 
amazing movies mm -hmm. all the time in a theater, they which do. is the way to see so a movie. take advantage. And that take was... advantage. It's it's an important place. Yeah. And, uh, Thanks for being here. And you'll be there time, tomorrow yeah. night at 7 o'clock. It's sold out. Sold out. Sorry, so folks. sorry.